Greetings, faceless men, shield maidens, and everyone enraged that we will not be seeing elephants in Westeros. Why even bring it up last season, writers? Why? Since my last theory video got a little heavy on the bittersweet, I propose we aim to keep this theory on the sweet side. For a bunch of bloodthirsty heartbreak addicts like us, nothing is sweeter in Game of Thrones than visualizing the death of your enemies. While most of our bad guys and gals have died in incredibly grisly ways, there is one mean soul who sits above the rest awaiting her just desserts. Cersei Lannister, played with delectable deviousness by the one and only Lena Hetty, has more than earned a phenomenal death for her years of misdeeds on the show. In the face of prophecy, I've selected three candidates who I think are capable of doing the deed. And just to make it a challenge, none of them are named Lannister. I'm Hudsimus Prime, and today, I want to answer the question asked by the angry mob of villagers inside all of us. Can someone please show this murderous hussy to the gates of hell? As is tradition, this is the time to warn you we will be discussing the Valonqar prophecy from the books and the show, and the Game of Thrones series as a whole. If you're looking for script leaks or to protect your virgin ears from what episodes have aired, this may not be your video. For the rest of us, let's go lion hunting! Before we talk about Cersei's death, show viewers should know Martin's already talked about it. In the opening scene of Season 5, young Cersei visits Maggie the Frog and has her fortune read. While most of this prophecy does make it into the show, its conclusion was omitted. In the books, after the line mentioning the Golden Shrouds, And when your tears have drowned you, the Valonqar shall wrap his hands about your pale white throat and choke the life from you. According to this, the Valonqar, which is Valyrian for younger sibling, will choke out Cersei. Since Cersei has two younger brothers, older than Jaime by minutes, this prophecy being completed by a Lannister has been analyzed and theorized to death. As such, I want to remove them from contention right away. Now they could very well be right, but everyone's heard those arguments. As promised, I've compiled a list of three non-Lannister suspects that could be responsible for sending Cersei Lannister to the afterlife. Some more likely than others, but these are my Dark Wolf predictions, so let's dive in with perhaps the most likely to get a knife into the Queen, Arya Stark. Arya started Season 7 on her way to kill the Queen, only being thwarted by Ed Sheeran and news of Jon Snow's return to Winterfell. With the Battle of Winterfell set for Episode 3, if Arya survives, what do you guys think she's going to do with those three 80-minute episodes she has left? I'm going to kill the Queen. Now I'm far from the first person to throw Arya forward as a suspect. She is a younger sibling thanks to her Stark family, and as a faceless woman, Arya's hands can easily become his hands. A lot of people believe she will wear Jaime's face to do the deed. I question this, however. If Jaime is fighting with the Starks against the dead, if he dies heroically, as I believe he will, wouldn't it be weird for Arya to skin him for her magic to work? Or worse, what if he survives the battle, fights bravely, and then Arya stabs him? And then Brienne sees the whole thing. Round two, fight! While that exact scenario is less likely to occur, with water dancing, stealth, and assassin skills, there is a strong case to make for Arya being the one to end Queen Cersei. She is on her list after all. Speaking of goals, big shout out to Euron Greyjoy for both announcing and completing his goal in one episode. But first, I'm gonna fuck the queen. Do I please the queen? With his new intimate connection to Cersei, Euron Greyjoy becomes my next candidate to murder the Lion Queen. Cersei is clearly in dire straits for human affection if she's willing to shack up with Captain Syphilis. It's the weakness that opens the door for Euron to get a little too rough, and before you know it, boom, Euron's the Valonqar. He's Balon Greyjoy's younger brother, and he has two hands. Fulfilling the prophecy and knowing this crazy bastard, she wouldn't be the first person he's choked to death. Though the Pirate King here does have the means to do the deed, I don't know if he has the motivation. I mean, sure he could kill and seize the throne, but does he really want to be sitting there when the ice zombies or dragons roll in from the north? Since he's notched his belt, I could easily see Euron running home at the first sign of a true threat, which leaves me unsure he'll be the one to off Cersei. Though his bed hopping, however, does make him the front runner for the time being. 
Though there are a number of characters who could fill this final suspect slot, I've decided to truly aim for the fences with my next selection. As of now, I have yet to see anyone else throw this name into the Cersei Deadpool, and if you have, you better send me that link because me and them, we gots to hang out. Now for this theory to play out, Season 8 will have to play out in a very specific way. Here's how I could see Season 8 unfolding. Since I have discussed how the Battle of Winterfell could scatter the Dead Army, the focus moves to the battle for the Iron Throne. As Danny and Jon's remaining forces head towards King's Landing, they are met by the Golden Company. When met with a dragon or two, I'm sure these no elephant having shiny boys won't think twice when Daenerys makes them an offer. The book makes it well known that the Golden Company never breaks a contract. Just like everyone had shouted from the rooftops that the wall had never fallen, only to have it fall, I believe we're being set up to have the Golden Boys break such a contract. The Golden Company is composed of former Westerosi lords and knights who've been exiled from Westeros for one reason or another. The only reason they're mercenaries in the first place is because they can't go home to Westeros. Now they're back home and faced with one, if not two, Targaryens offering them lands and titles to fill the empty castles and fields left by eight seasons of warfare. Would anyone blame the Golden Company for breaking their first contract to return home? If this theory holds, Cersei is going to be in some serious shit. That is one big pile of shit. With 20,000 less troops and Euron having hit it and quit it, Cersei finds herself low on support as the Targaryen forces swarm King's Landing. If there is any justice in the world of ice and fire, we will have the Hound take out the mountain, overcoming his fear of fire to burn his zombie brother. Following this, Cersei will have no choice but to run for her life. In doing so, she has to face a hard truth. Where does a woman that everyone hates have to go? With no allies, she heads to the only other place she's ever called home, Casterly Rock. Though taken by the Unsullied in Season 7, I doubt they left anyone there with zombies at the door in Season 8. Alone, terrified, and desperate, she flees to the rock as fast as her carriage can take her. However, she will not make it. Her course takes her straight through the Riverlands, where I believe she runs afoul of my personal favorite to introduce Cersei to Satan. There's a concept in theater known as Chekhov's gun. It states that if the author introduces a loaded gun to the audience, that gun must be fired by the end of the piece. Otherwise, why bring it up in the first place? With this notion in mind, I believe there was a reason for Arya's chance encounter in Season 7. If all the preceding theorizing remains true, I believe Nymeria, Ghost's long-lost sister wolf, runs down and rips Cersei to shreds in the snow with her super pack. Now, before you can ask me how much milk of the poppy I've taken, hear me out on this one. Nymeria's murdering Cersei with her super pack would be a grisly and satisfying end to a woman who helped bring unspeakable misery to House Stark. If Cersei is running through the Riverlands to escape King's Landing, it's the middle of the winter and there's not a lot of food out there. If this super pack of wolves we were shown in Season 7 is still there, they'd have a lot of mouths to feed and I wouldn't doubt they'd run down any unfortunate traveler they catch on the road. Perhaps the reason I enjoy this theory most of all is because we know Cersei is a very nasty woman and has harmed and killed a lot of people. Though Cersei has an immaculate record of vengeance and follow through, there are three characters I can think of who have escaped her wrath, Tyrion, Sansa, and Nymeria. Nymeria was the first character Cersei attempted to have killed and also her first failure. And what of the direwolf? How poetic for Cersei's life to come to an end at the pause of a life she failed to end years ago. Her early failure seals her fate, as the lion without a pride is devoured by a pack of wolves. And for you prophecy sticklers out there not ready to sign on to this long shot candidate, well, they left that part of the prophecy out of the show for some reason. Right? But now that I've given you guys some choices, what I want to know is, who do you guys think will be called Queen Slayer by season's end? Do you like any of the options I've laid out here before you, or do you have someone else in mind? After all this, are you still thinking she'll be dropped by a fellow lion? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for another huge wave of support in my previous Game of Thrones videos. Just know you guys are awesome, keep sending your feedback, and let's ride this show into the ground, people. Remember to be sure to like and subscribe for more theory and gaming videos. Thanks again for watching, you guys are the best, and until next time beautiful people, good luck in your day, and Godspeed.